Okay, we'll go ahead and uh, slowly get started with our program today. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. This is the second in a series of webinars designed to introduce a new and improved unemployment insurance premiums and wage reporting system to our employer community. Um, today, we have our panel of experts here joining us to answer all of your questions, and we have a lot of content to share with you. Today's webinar is specific to third-party administrators, and this was really um, based on the large number of TPA questions that we received during our first webinar, which by the way is available on our website. And so we decided to present some content tailored to our TPA community today. We hope we can dig in and get to all of your questions. Um, again, our experts are here to answer your questions. We we're fortunate enough after our first webinar to be able to um, separate out all of the TPA related questions. And so we, at the end of our presentation, actually have a few slides that covers many of the recurring questions that were asked by TPA participants during the last webinar, but surely that does not cover all of the questions you may have for us. So we have lots of time at the end to really get into some of the mechanics behind our new system known as MyUI Employer Plus. Uh, today's webinar will be recorded and available on our website. It will also be sent out to all participants afterward, along with the deck. And we have at the end a number of resources available to stay in touch with us and uh, monitor our go live uh, preparations, information resources coming to you from our unemployment insurance division. So just real quick on today's agenda, we'll talk about the current state of UI um, premium system in Colorado, the future state, again, known as My UI Employer Plus, review some of the features and functionality, um, highlight some additional ways to connect with us, get into some frequently asked questions, and of course, most importantly, leave time for your questions at the end of the webinar. Please go ahead and drop those questions into the Q&A function. And uh, if we don't get to those in real time, know that we'll be circling back to those and hope to answer as many questions as possible during today's presentation. So a quick look at the history of Colorado's unemployment insurance premium system. During the pandemic, we actually modernized the benefits side of the UI system. And now we are poised to modernize the tax or premium side of the system. Um, the legacy system is long overdue for a modernization, similar to the benefits side of the house. We were operating this on a legacy mainframe and we are excited now to bring both benefits and premiums into one environment, which will bring about a number of new process improvements for both employers and claimants when interacting with the UI program. Um, we did previous to this deployment and the work on the system receive broad stakeholder support and feedback for modernizing the system um, during times of economic downturn, like we saw during the pandemic. Uh, it makes certain things like administering new federal programs and um, other components within the program very um, difficult. The system becomes difficult to reprogram and update um, with an outdated system. And we uh, that's just one of the many things we hope to realize now with a fully integrated modernized system. So real quickly, and I'll turn it over to my colleague, uh, some of the new and improved features and functionality you will realize in My UI Employer Plus, easier premium, premium payments, um, more simplified wage reporting, streamlined account management, overall greater self-service, and a new workflow and work stream for customer service requests, which we'll talk about a little bit later. And um, certainly want to spend a lot of time getting into the logistics behind a uh, new employer or a TPA account settings, roles, and relationships. And with that, I think I will turn it over to my colleague, Julie. Julie, take it away. Thanks, Cher, and welcome, everyone. I'm really excited to give you all a little bit more information on what we've been working on and what we've been cooking up for you with this new system. Um, for starters, an easier way to pay premiums, simple payments, fewer reports. 
So really with the launch of the system, employers and TPAs, you're no longer gonna need to file separate premium and wage reports um, with your premium payments. Instead, the premiums are gonna be calculated automatically in the system based on the submitted wages and then paid directly into the account. So what does that mean? That means no more pen and paper calculations. We're gonna automatically calculate it for you. We accept electronic payments via EFT. There's bulk payment options available in the system. Um, right now we're including ACH debit. There are plans to potentially add in that ACH credit that I know our TPA population is very interested in down the line in the future. Um, employers, if they do want to continue to submit paper, we do have an electronic, um, non-electronic waiver and process. Very easy. You've got some options where you can call in and talk to someone and they can do it right over the phone, or they can mail out a piece of paper um, waiver for the employer to fill out and send back in. You can also pay your voluntary premium payments right in the system your leasing company certification fees, reimbursable employer securities, all electronic, electronically right in there. Um, you can search and view your employer payment history. There's gonna be a lot of information right at your fingertips that you'll be able to see and be able to navigate to. And we allow you to save your banking information in the employer account for streamlined payments. So you've got a couple options with the payments. You can do a bulk payment for everybody all at once. You can have the individual employer's payment information saved onto their account. So it's just a click, click, click to pay. So lots of different payment options in there. Also, you're gonna be saving time filing your wage reports. We've streamlined it to make it a lot easier for you. And there's a lot of different options right in the system. So the MyUI Employer Plus system is going to offer more reporting and uploading options for users right there in the system. Employers and TPAs will be able to upload wage reports with multiple file upload options. The wage reports are also going to automatically trigger updates to the qualification in information on the employer account if needed. So what does this mean? We are still accepting the same file formats that we have accepted in the past. We did add a couple of fields that are not required for new additional information. So they are not required, no changes to your current file formats. They can be delimited, ICESA, EFW2, or XML. We take them all. Um, you can write in the system, select and upload the same wage information from the previous quarter. So you can duplicate the previous quarter into this quarter, and then you can just make the changes as needed for this quarter, if you would like. You can also make wage adjustments right inside the employer account. You can do this for the entirety of the file by uploading a new file to overwrite the old one, or you can do it for a single social security number or multiple social security numbers. You can search and view previous wage reports, um, so what you've filed in the past, and you can assign multiple contacts to receive automatic correspondences and reminders. We are going to allow you to take control of your account. Now, this doesn't mean the employer's accounts. Um, this means your TPA account. So within our system, you're going to really have a lot more user-focused account management. When designing the system, the team, the project team really thought about what does it mean for all of our stakeholders to use our system? What does it mean for our staff? What does it mean for our employers? What does it mean for our large employers, our small employers, our TPA community? And so we really wanted to make sure that we had, you know, enough in there for you to be able to take control of the account, but not have to own the employer's account. So MyUI Employer Plus allows employers, TPAs, and leasing companies access to view and maintain the employer account information without owning it. The new employer inbox will send automated messages, reminders, correspondences based on recent events and triggers that happen inside your account. There's also multiple search options um, to find lots of different information, your wage reports, your benefit charges, all of your documents, your fact finding. You're going to be able to search everything in there and find it right in the system. So your self-service account management will have less reliance on the UI staff. It is all very intuitive in the system and we are creating a very robust user guide that is going to be available for you to help navigate through the system. You can view and initiate information changes right on the employer's homepage. So you'll be able to access your TPA account and then you'll be able to see every single employer that you represent. And you'll be able to navigate into the employer's account making updates as needed. 
You're going to be able to search and view electronic correspondences instead of those paper forms and respond to the fact finding requests instantly. Um, there's one system to search and view the employer account information, including your rate information and the bulk rate information. We also added in a better way to connect with us. So really thinking about customer service on your terms when you need it and make that part of the system. So how did we do that? Um, in an effort to better serve our Colorado employers, TPAs, leasing companies, our new system will offer a new way to request help from the UI staff. Our phone lines will still be there, don't worry. You can still call us if you want. But we do have a built-in contact us feature that allows account managers to send inquiries directly to the UI staff. This means that you can submit that electronic customer service request. You don't have to sit and wait on hold or get transferred a bunch of times. You can submit it right in the system. The inquiries are automatically routed to the proper department staff who will either take care of the issue, call you, reach out to offer some support if you need it, help walk you through how to do it so you can do it on multiple different accounts, or they'll need to escalate it to another group to reach out to you. With this contact us feature, there's also the option to upload documentation for us to review. So right in your request, you're gonna be able to upload documentation um, right in there for us to have on your account. That documentation is saved to the employer account as well. You can also submit an urgent customer service request if needed, if there's something urgent that you need help with. Special features for our TPAs, because we didn't want to forget about y'all. Um, lots of new functionalities for easier client account management. How great is it going to be that you can go into your TPA account and see all of your employer accounts and navigate right through it? No more single logins for each employer account. So you're going to have your one TPA account. Everything's going to be associated in. So we have really focused on modernized collaboration. My UI Employer Plus, it really makes the account management easier than ever. Once the TPA has registered for their own My UI Employer Plus account, the employer can then link their employer account to the TPA. Now, don't worry, we've got some more information coming up about how this is going to happen at Go Live because this could be a big, a big lift for y'all, but we, we really tried to streamline it for you. So TPAs and their clients will manage roles and relationships inside the system. While TPAs will have the same features that employers use, the new system also brings specific TPA tools, including that one account login to manage all your client accounts that I was talking about, bulk payments for multiple clients at once, streamlined file uploading, automated correspondences, and then access to view, manage client charges, protests, and more. In addition, you'll have that bulk rate option where you can pull all of the bulk rates out, you'll be able to see all of your employer accounts right there. All right, so let's recap. Lots of things that we've talked about. Um, the first one, easier payments, easier way to pay us the premiums, um, premium online payments right there in the system, and it will process and tell you exactly what you owe faster wage reports. We really streamlined this, but also tried to keep it the same for you. So we didn't want to change too much. So you had to do a whole bunch of reprogramming. We wanted to make it streamlined. Self-serve account management, really user-focused functionalities. You're going to be able to do a lot more inside the system and you're going to have your own TPA login. On-demand customer service, this one's my favorite part uh, because we added it into the system functionality. It was not there, but we added it specific for Colorado. Um, and hopefully other states will get this as well in future releases from this, this product. Um, the help you need when you need it. And then TPA specific features, a better, an overall better way to manage the accounts. All right, Cher, I think back to you. Thanks so much, Julie. Um, a few ways to connect with us, as we mentioned at the top of the webinar, we have a number of bulletins, including our uh, employer email update, which many of you probably receive already. In addition to that, we have a My, My UI Employer Plus update, which is specific to this project. 
Um, all of these uh, materials are available on our newly created um, homepage for the project, which we've dropped into the chat. Um, also, you can follow us on social media and any future webinars. Um, if we reach capacity, which we did during our first webinar, are live streamed on our YouTube channel. Now, we, we did pull out, if we can go to the next slide, thanks. We did pull out some questions from our first webinar that are specific to our TPA community. So what we're going to do, and I think a lot of these questions have already been asked during the Q&A, but for the record, we want to uh, go over some of the more frequently asked questions and um, dig into some of the logistics, and then we can circle back to anything submitted in the Q&A afterward and continue to um, respond to your questions. So Julie, uh, if you can take this first slide, Megan will take the second, and then I'll round us out for the third, and then we'll get to more questions coming in from our participants. Absolutely. Thanks, Cher. All right, so lots of questions around how is this going to all work? Um, we've really thought about logistically what is the best way. So how will TPAs get access to clients' accounts? So first and foremost, the TPAs are going to need to register for their account in the system. What this does, it's a very easy process, just a couple of questions, and then you get your TPA account, which is pretty basic until you get some employers associated with you. Uh, but what this does is it gives you a TPA account number, which is really important down the road for employers to use to associate their account with you. But at Go Live, we know that we want you to be able to file those Q3 filings right away. So what we're doing is the TPAs are going to own, register and own their accounts. And then once that is done, we are going to run a relationship um, with the employers. So anyone who has filed in Q2 of 2023 will be associated with the TPA account. So every employer that you have filed for um, wage reports in Q2 of 2023 at Go Live, you will have and be listed once once we run that file a couple days after Go Live, you'll be able to see them in your TPA account. If you have any employers that have switched in Q3, those will need to be manually done, um, but those Q2 will. Now, what does that mean for the power of attorney? No more power of attorney, no more paper. It's done right in the system. It's really easy on the employer and we're gonna have a lot of different user guides. And there was also a really fantastic suggestion from some TPAs in a previous session um, for a possible change request that we're exploring to make it a little easier. So if the TPA um, gets a new client, they can send the approval request through the system. The employer will get the approval request and either approve or deny it, but that will be in a future release down the road. But that is something that we are exploring as well to make it a little bit easier. We heard you and we're, we're looking into that to see how, how we can make that happen. Um, do TPAs and client need Oh, sorry. Do TPAs and clients need separate accounts? Absolutely, yes. We want you to own your TPA account and have access through the employer granting it. Mm -hmm. And we want the employers to own their accounts as well. Um, what this means is that you're going to get the communications that you need on the things that you need. The employer is going to get the communications on the things that they need. Can TPAs assign themselves to client accounts? Unfortunately, no. Um, this is part of that change request that we're looking at down the road. Only Right now, only the employer can associate that TPA relationship. So the employer has to activate their account or register for a brand new account and then really associate the TPA in that way. Um, after Go Live, we are looking to add in that change and that suggestion. So that might change down the road. So stay tuned. And I think, Megan, over to you. Thanks, Julie. Um, so for uh, third party providers um, who submit paper files currently or paper checks for their clients, um, you may be wondering what is the electronic filing requirement? So we have had an existing electronic filing requirement um, in regulation for several years that we just have not enforced due to various barriers. Uh, largely um, technologically, um, uh, some barriers related to technology. So um, moving forward, we are looking to require electronic filing for all users, TPAs and individual employers. 
However, there are going to be circumstances, we understand, where there may be uh, some additional barriers, such as uh, rural TPAs or those who have slow internet access or, or other issues. And so we are going to be moving to a paper waiver process. So we are going to be initiating the paper waiver on our website here in the future. This waiver is also something that you can complete by calling our customer service line and indicating that you need to be authorized for paper uh, wage filings. If you have a waiver in place, we will issue you paper wage reports on a quarterly basis by mail. Uh, paper wage reports are no longer going to be sent unless you are a wavered employer so or TPA. Um, so please know that you won't get that as your quarterly reminder. Um, can we continue making payments by check? So yes, um, we will, of course, continue to accept paper checks. However, the uh, gold standard for us is going to be moving to the EFT electronic funds transfer through a bank account, saved bank information on your TPA account. So that will be um, uh, the preference and then paper checks will be uh, authorized. You will receive, if you choose to submit a paper check, you will receive a, a barcoded voucher that you'll have to print out and include with your check. Uh, that is so that we can appro appropriately associate that payment with your clients. Um, are wage adjustments and other amendments done online? Yes, absolutely. This is a big change for all of you moving forward. Currently, any adjustments to wage filings um, or social security number corrections have to be done by paper and have to be processed by our deputies, which I understand creates some um, additional delays and, and challenges from claims processing standpoints for some individuals. So we will be authorizing the ability to do this online. However, there are going to be some thresholds that will require staff review. So it, it may be immediate in some cases and in others, it may require oversight um, as kind of a, a brief example of of one of the scenarios that would require oversight. If, if you uh, decrease the amount owed to us for the quarter, that would trigger a staff review. And then finally, do we upload wage files inside the new system? Yes, we will be able to accept FTP uploads within the system. So you will be able to do all uh, wage reporting payment and uploads through the MyUI Employer Plus system. However, the exception would be for any TPAs, uh, large TPAs that are filing wage reports that exceed um, or meet or exceed 20 megabyte files. So those ones would need to go through the AWS file transfer system. And I think back to you, Cher. I'm going to send it over to Julie, our other subject subject matter expert. Sorry about that. Thanks, Megan. Thanks, Megan and Cher. Um, all right. So do we need to re-register for a MyUI Employer Plus account? Yes. We're going to need you to activate your the account for the employers. Um, so if a TPA is also an employer, they'll need to activate their account. We are going to be sending out special activate instructions to our employer population. We're hoping to be able to send it all out by email, but we don't have all the emails for our employer population. So if we do not have an email on file, that will need to go out through the mail, um, which can still be done, but it's a little bit of a slower process. So the TPAs will need to register for their account. The employers will need to activate their MyUI Employer Plus account. Can TPA employers and employer accounts have multiple users? Yes. Um, each account is going to have a single account administrator, but then there are multiple sub-users that are allowed. Um, sub-users can be any number of people and the combination of roles and permissions um, to manage the account, whatever they need to manage the account, you can assign them. Will account payment history be available in the new system? Yes, you can see all of the payment information, the rate information. Um, it's going to be current year plus five is going to be transferred over with the exception of a couple of employer accounts where we needed to take additional information. So the majority of our employer population will see current year plus five. Um, does this mean we respond to fact-finding requests online? Yes, you certainly can. Um, the fact-finding requests will, can be answered right inside My UI Employer Plus. 
Um, determinations and appeals will also be managed in the new system. So what does this mean to you? If you have your correspondence preference set as electronic, which is what we prefer because we can get the information out to you faster, you'll be able to respond to everything right then and there in the system. Those were easy, Cher. Um, <laughs> back over to you, I think. Yes, thanks, Julie. Okay, so before we get to some of the questions submitted into the q and I know we had a participant raise their hand. Um, before we get to Daniel, real quick about our go live and our timing. So we mentioned this in the chat. Um, at the top of the webinar, we, I, we didn't give you a date um, because we wanted to make sure that all of our communication channels were in place to start receiving questions from you once we announced the go live date, which is the 1st of October. So I'm going to ask Julie to walk us through the timelines because um, this will require us to bring down our current system in order to deploy the new system, which will result in a, a few uh, dark days or downtime where you're not able to access the current system. So Julie, why don't you walk us through timeline of Go Live? Absolutely, thanks Cher. So as we get prepared and ready for go live, like Cher mentioned, we are going to need to bring systems down. This includes our MyUI employer system and our MyUI Plus system for our claimant population. Our MyUI employer system will come down September 27th at 6 p.m. So that system will go down. 24 hours later, our other systems will go down, including our CAT system, some of our internal systems, as well as our MyUI Plus system will come down on the 28th at 6 p.m. We will have some dark days where we do our data conversion. So we're gonna pull all of our data out. We're gonna convert it, transform it, get it into the system and start bringing the system back up. We are anticipating that the system will be back up on October 1st. Um, what this means is that our claimant population will be able to get into the system because they already have accounts. And our TPA population will be able to get into the system because they do not have accounts um, and they need to register for their TPA accounts. Our employer population will not be able to get into the system just yet because we need to run the activation. So October 1st, the TPAs will be able to get into the system. October 2nd is a state holiday, so our phone queues are not going to be managed, but we are going to be sending out some additional communications to our TPA population. If you get stuck while you're registering, you can submit some kind of request. I think it's gonna be a Google form to us. We are going to have select project team members available over the weekend and Monday as well to help get the system up, do our smoke testing and our production testing. So we will be available to respond to you to be able to help you get in. Then on October 3rd, we are going to start allowing our employer population to get in. We are going to start sending emails out in the morning of October 3rd. We are going to phase it throughout the day. And then once those emails are done being sent, if it's the third, it might be the fourth, depending on how fast we can get those out, um, then our employer population will be able to come in. We are also going to be mailing the paper activations, which will have a special code on them. Um, for our employer population to activate their account. And what that activation will do is it will associate all of their information from our CAT system and our MyUI employer system to our new MyUI employer plus system so they can see all of their historical information. Um, of note, once we get all of our TPA population into the system, we're going to run that association file for the TPA employer relationship. So we will communicate to all of our TPA population and reach out to our TPAs if we have not seen you register to get you registered so that we can run that file so that you'll be able to see your employer accounts. I think that's that's the gist of it. That's Anything great. else, Cher? No, that's perfect. Thanks, Julie. And I did note in the chat, we will be publishing all of these dates, including the downtime and the go live date on our website, which we dropped in the chat previously. And be sure to sign up for the My UI Employer Plus update email newsletter. And that's the best way to keep tabs on where we are with this new project. So with that, we're going to go to a couple of questions and then back to the Q&A. Daniel, you have your ha hand raised. I think we've unmuted you if you'd like to uh, ask your question.
I don't know if our moderator needs to unmute Daniel, but uh, I Daniel should be unmuted. Um, how about this? We'll pause on Daniel. Let's go to Alex. Can we unmute Alex? Alex, you might be muted on your side. I think we unmuted you as a participant. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Thanks. Go ahead. Okay, perfect. Um, so just a couple of questions. Is there any type of uh, CAPTCHA system going to be associated with uh, TPAs being able to log in? Because if there isn't, that, that puts a hamper on our system. Can you repeat the first part? Any what? Is there any type of CAPTCHA? So basically, um, a CAPTCHA requirement would be um, before you log in, it'll ask, ask you to select all the pictures with the bicycles, or um, it'll ask you to, it'll give you like um, lopsided letters or numbers and you have to type it in. So that's uh, what a CAPTCHA requirement is. We is do that have... be included in the system? We do have multi-factor authentication, so you will need to MFA into the system to keep it secure. Um, but I do not believe that we have CAPTCHA anymore. Okay, perfect. Um, so in, in, in associated or in question to that, what are the verification types that you'll be sending? Is it through text? Is it through email? Is it uh, You have an code? option. You have an option to do an authenticator app, as well as email, as well as text messages. I will say the email option is a little sluggish sometimes, depending on what's going on in the system. So the authenticator and the text message is definitely the fastest. Okay, and the last question I had, I know you said that you guys are going to link our clients to each of the TPAs and that any new clients will have to um, give to the TPAs permission. Um, has there been anything I'm just thinking that employers are not very responsive to requests. So are you guys going to give a grace period for any clients that either didn't register or, you know, we didn't get notification on time to file timely for them because they didn't respond to, you know, the action to give the ADP or another TPA access to their accounts or be able to file for them? Um, I might kick over to Megan. I don't know if we've had any uh, deep discussions about any, uh, you know, timelines shifting definitely around go live. But Megan, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, and I think that this this is something that we are considering given the time of the quarter that we are going live with this new system. We understand that there may be some delays and hiccups. Uh, with the association between the TPAs and their clients. So we don't have any hard and fast decisions on this yet, but this is under um, uh, consideration for some waivers. Okay. Um, and the only reason why I bring this up is because this is a real concern of ours. I, I know we typically would like a 90-day window for any type of development. I, I know you guys mentioned that you wanted to minimize or you know prevent any type of development from our side. But uh, for example, now um, I'm assuming there's, there's going to be a new path for us to upload the, our current files to Colorado um, Unemployment. And that is development on our side. Um, right now, I, I don't know honestly what we're going to do. And the fact that you guys are also sunsetting the old system, um, what happens if there's an issue with the new system and you can't, you know, people can't file, people can't submit? It, that's just, I mean, I'm going to be honest, we're a little nervous about, um, it seems to be rushed on our end because we received, you know, kind of, I don't want to say last minute, but it is a short time frame for all this new information that's being provided to PPAs and other employers as well. I think we're definitely going to see how things evolve for Go Live um, for our TPA population and keep in mind that um, you know, this is a large system modernization. So as Megan said, you know, there there could be some potentials for some waivers and some extended deadlines um, if if there are problems that are run into. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Julie. 
Um, let's go back to Daniel and see if you're able to unmute yourself. Okay, we'll pause on Daniel. Let's go back to the Q&A. Um, lots of questions coming in. Thanks to our experts for answering um, just over 35 questions already. Just note that if we don't have an immediate answer to one of your questions, we will dig into it and follow up with um, materials on our website. During our last webinar, we had a lot of questions we were not able to get to. And so um, the answers we were able to provide are all listed in a spreadsheet on our website. And so if we put a pin in something you've asked us today, we will research it and follow up with um, more information. So with that, um, and again, some of this may have been answered in some of our slides, but let's go ahead and go to some of the questions here. Um, will the confirmations from filing tell us how much is do for each employer in a bulk file so that we can reconcile for rate changes or credit balances prior to bulk payment. Yes, you'll be able to pull all of the bulk rate information and all of the bulk information right out of the system. Thanks, Julie. Yeah, and there were two from Randy. Do you mind if I take those Go two? Go ahead. All right, so Randy says, in lieu of the AWS file transfer, could a larger TPA break out their wage files into some smaller files and upload those on the MyUI employer, oh, it moved, employer plus portal, assuming yes, as it would be under the 20 megabytes. Um, I am researching this. I am thinking with the system logic that when you upload the second file, it will overwrite the first file. But I want to make sure because if it has different social security numbers, we should have some system logic in place. So Randy, we're doing some testing on this to see if we can get this answer for you and confirm without making any assumptions in the system. And then one more from Randy, once our employers are added to the system under our TPA, will we be able to download that list so we can run a compare to our current client list? That way we know which ones still need TPA and can either send those to us or communicate to those clients to assign us uh, the TPA to the account. Yes, you will be able, once we run that file, you will be able to see all of your employer population and download that list out. So you'll be able to do all of that. And then there will be avenues of communication so that you can reach us so that we can troubleshoot with you and see, um, you know, if anything happened, if you need any help and how we can make that easier for you. Thank you, Julie. Um, I'm going to combine two questions regarding registration. First question, so to be clear, will TPAs not be able to register until 10-1 is part one of one question. Part two, when and where can TPAs register for an account? Yes, October 1st is the date. Um, and we are going to be sending out some communications on where to go and what to do, um, as well as what to expect. And then if you run into any problems, what to do then. So more information to come out on that. Um, Sharon team will, we're going to be putting something together to get out to you. Thanks, Julie. Let's go to um, Charles. I think Charles, you had your hand up if you're still wanting to ask a question. We Hello, can... can you hear me? Yes, go ahead, Charles. Hi. Well, um, I appreciate this. This helps out tremendously for us. Um, I just had a couple of questions around um, that wage file that gets uploaded. And I know that the Tumbleweed website's going to be shut down. Um, is there going to be any new types of rejections? Or if we don't have a TPA um, authorization for a client, does that, what happens when the file gets uploaded? Does that kick back a reject? Does it reject the entire filing? Are there going to be any updates to the rejection process? There are, Charles. We're making it more robust. Oh, okay. um, So we have fatal and non-fatal errors, and we um, are going to have those listed in our user guide. And if a fatal error is in your file, it will reject it, but it will tell you what it is. Awesome. It'll tell you what you need to fix. Awesome. Um, so there are three upload file options. So the first one is a small enough file where it gives you the information in real time. 
Um, the second one is you can submit it within our system, the MyUI Employer Plus system. It's under the 20 megabytes that Megan talked about, but it's still big enough that we need to process it overnight. Those files, you'll be able to come back in the next day to find the results. And then our AWS file transfer, those, you can put those in the system um, up until 10 p.m. Mountain Time. We did confirm that time is going to be 10 p.m. Mountain Time. And then overnight, those will batch in process. And then a return file with any errors will be in the AWS family transfer folder for you to look at. So it will tell you what's wrong. Yeah, and excuse my ignorance, that AWS is that, that's the Tumbleweed website, right? Yep, that's that to replace the Tumbleweed. Oh, okay. So that will be a different, is there any type of documentation will be available for that? Is that, that's just like an FTP process on the yep. back end, right? Yep. Okay, awesome. awesome. And we're going to do some live sessions if needed. We've actually only identified um, less than 10 TPAs that are going to fit into this category. So we're going to do some targeted outreach to them um, and help them get set up. And then any other TPAs that um, prefer that, we're going to look into helping you get set up as well. Awesome. Awesome. I had a couple more questions, if that's okay. Um, on the payment voucher, um, I, there's a lot of information here, so excuse my excuse me if I've, I, I I missed it. But if we don't have that ACH, because it'll take time for us, I, I believe somebody else mentioned some development on our side for some ACH processes in that whether it's debit or credit in our system. If we continue to send those payments via check. I, I thought I heard something that we have to have individual vouchers downloaded from the website or sent to the sent to us that we need to attach to those checks. Is that correct? Yeah, we do have the individual um, vouchers. I would like to do a little research on a TPA voucher. I think it's in the system, so we just need to confirm that. Okay. Um, but I think Megan would agree if you send us money, we're not going to reject it. Of course. <laughs> um, we just might need a little more information on where to put it and where to post it. Um, so, you know, through this transition period, we're, we're going to be working with you to make sure that you can pay us and we can take your money and put it where it needs to be. Awesome. And my last question is, I know I had reached out and I believe it was with Megan. Is there any way, you know, if we can get a point of contact for a bulk filer um, when we have issues um, that we're not calling a hotline or, or anything like that? It's just a lot easier for us when, especially with this new type of system that we have, for us to reach out to a specific person that will help us out as a TPA as opposed to an individual client. Yeah, definitely. Um, Megan, do you want to take this one? I don't know if we have a product yeah. owner named yet. <laughs> Not specifically. Um, however, current um, process where we have an FTP line through our uh, customer service center, the 9100 number 303 318 9100, there's an FTP um, a line through our wage team, and they will continue to be a resource. And then we all will also be assigning a higher level product owner for some of the more complex. Uh, upload questions that may exist, especially for those who use the AWS file upload tool. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks, Charles, for the question. Um, let's go. I just want to do a quick time check. We're at about quarter till. Um, we will have additional TPA focused webinars. The dates are available on our webpage, but real quickly, um, September 11th, we have an, another webinar scheduled at 11 a.m., a TPA-specific webinar on September 26th, and likely, given the number of questions we may not have time for, I may ask our experts to find another date where we can deliver content specific to the TPA community, because I know most of our questions have been coming in from um, TPAs. Let's go back to one in the chat. Um, I think... Julie, did you answer this from Randy? Um, for individual checks, are the vouchers going to be required to be sent with the checks? If so, is it one voucher for all payments or a voucher for each employer? I think we did, and that one is a TBD. Um, I know the vouchers for each individual, individual employer exist in the system, and I wanna see if there is one for TPAs. If not, then I think that is a, a fantastic change that we could um, you know, look at implementing as well, but we'll work with you to accept your payments. Thanks, Julie. Um, let's go to this one. 
uh, we informed that the account number format will be changed. How will that affect the specifics for bulk filing? Parentheses, eight digits with no dash. I think we may have responded to this one, but Julie, can you touch on that one again? Yeah, definitely. So the employer account numbers are changing. We are going to, right now it is digits, um, dot distribution points, normally zero, zero, dash, and then a number. We are taking the zero, zeros out, the distribution points and putting them in a separate place and we're adding some leading zeros. So it will be a string of numbers. Um, but don't worry, the current account number um, format will still be accepted in the file. So we are accepting it as is and the new format to make it easier for you all. Thanks, Julie. Um, and then there was one share that I tagged to answer live about account activation. Go ahead. Thanks. All right. So will we be able to call in to get employers code that will be mailed? Um, they will lose them. I, I definitely believe that. Um, so if an employer does lose their code, they can call in. And what we can do if they have a, a mailed, a mailed preferred correspondence, we can switch it to electronic, add in an email and regenerate the code right then and there. So they get it in email form. So we do have that option. We also have the option if they would like it mailed again to just click that button and send another one out. We also, um, the code is good for 14 days. Once we hit that 14 days, we are going to take a look in our system to see how many employers have not yet activated their account and make a determination. Do we need to send another set of letters and emails out or do we need to start doing some outreach to these employers to help get them logged in? Thank you, Julie. I'm going to circle back to Daniel. I don't know if your hand is still raised, but wanna give you just Another opportunity, if not, please just go ahead and drop your question into the chat. Are you able to hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. So um, a couple of my questions already got answered, but one, so with it comes to rejections, we know that there will both be the fatal ones that will cause the file to completely error out and there'll be warnings. Will the client be penalized in any way for having those warnings um, warnings on their uh, wage report. If it is a non-fatal error, no. Um, if it is a fatal error, um, then you won't be able to um, upload the file if there are too many of them, but there are no um, penalties associated if there is any errors on the file. Perfect, and um, I know currently uh, things like items, missing socials, things like that cause a um, file to potentially completely reject as a fatal error. Will that be the same in this new system? Can you repeat for me which ones are the fatal ones now that you have issues with? Did you say commas? Uh, right now we have a lot of missing, or not even missing social, but um, items. If there's an item in the file, it seems to be rejecting out and uh, invalid or improper socials that are being entered. We have certain socials that we do not accept, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, um, all nine, something like that. But we are accepting items and we are also, um, I don't think the social, the missing social is a fatal error. Perfect. I do not believe I have any other questions. Thank you. Thanks, Daniel. Um, Julie or Megan, in the Q&A, anything you see we have not addressed that you want to make sure we capture? Let's go to um, this most recent one to clarify. Employer registration in the new system will require a code to be generated. Is that mailed or emailed? Both. Both. Yep. So depending on the correspondence preference, um, it'll go out either mailed or emailed. Perfect. Let's um, let's go back to this one again. I think this has been answered, but can two separate TPA firms have access to one business, or does the client drop off? 
one TPA when another adds the client? That's a good question. So there can only be one TPA per quarter per um, job. So if it is claims filing and fact finding, you can have one TPA for that. And if it's wage reporting and pay, you can have a different TPA for that. If uh, an employer switches TPAs in the middle, then it's up to the employer and the two TPAs to determine who is going to take that quarter. If it falls to the employer and there's no TPA, or does it fall to the new TPA and the previous TPA needs to send in their information to the new TPA so they can combine it. Um, and then there was a second part of that as well, right, Cher? Yes, and I think I closed it out. Let's see if we can find that again. Oh, it was, um, actually, I think you addressed all components of the question, unless I misremember. Oh, okay. I thought that you did, Julie. Um, I'll go back and find the question again, make sure that we covered everything. Um, let's go to, we have two folks with their hands raised. Let's go, um, Charles, go ahead. I think we you are unmuted. Hey, sorry, you got to hear my voice again. I apologize. Um, I On the EI, um, the, the employee account number changing, do you know when that's going to happen or is once the system the new system comes up and we're able to download our, our client listing, will that have all the new account numbers or is that scheduled later? It will happen at go live. Go so live. once we okay. get live. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Charles. I think we had another hand raised. Not showing up, but if you did have your hand raised, go ahead. We'll unmute you. All right, let's go back to the Q&A. Will you allow two bulk files, one by the old TPA and another by the new TPA in a quarter? I think you answered this one, Julie, but let's just touch on this one again. Yep, definitely. Um, so only one TPA per job in the system. So if it's wage reporting and um, payment, it will only be one TPA allowed to be able to be the TPA on the, the account. And then we've got some questions share about some additional webinars. Yeah, I was just going to get to that one, Julie. Thank you. So we do have two webinars scheduled. Likely we, we will be adding a few after go live and probably another TPA session before go live in October. So the two that are scheduled right now are September 11th. Um, this is a general employer and TPA webinar, um, September 11th at 11 a.m., uh, the next one specific to TPAs is September 26th at 11. Um, and as I said, likely we'll be adding one additional before go live and several after go live to um, answer any questions that you or issues or um, anything you may encounter in the registration process. And all of these dates are available on our um, homepage for the project. Let's see, we've got just about five or six more minutes. Um, Ms. Cher, I yeah. have a hand up. Thank you, Jen. Go ahead. Um, I had a couple questions about the roles for TPAs and forgive me, I'm a, a New Mexico based TPA. So I'm going to use that as a reference. Um, I know that there are usually roles, you know, to administer the account maintenance, to file and pay, to do benefits and claims, that kind of stuff. And there are certain roles that as TPAs we don't want and some that we do want. So for the ones that are linked to our accounts automatically, what roles are we going to be automatically granted? That is a great question, Jen. Um, we're going to keep it simple. So we're going to do wage reporting um, and payments. And then if you are associated in sides, we're going to do fact finding. Okay. And then we can always adjust that later, right? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Jen. Um, Megan, we have a follow-up for you based on an answer to a previous question. Um, can you clarify the question regarding zero wages and no employee reports? Can those be included in the bulk file or would TPAs need to manually file on the website? 
So my understanding, and Julie, please jump in if I'm incorrect here, is that you should be able to indicate no wages in your bulk filing, and that will flag the employer account to indicate that you filed for them. The account should remain active. They just have no employee wages to report for that quarter. I see you nodding your head, Julie. That is so. my understanding as well. Yep. Great. So yes, you'll do the same process as you would for any of your clients that have actual wages for the quarter, and that will indicate a zero filing for that employer, no payment owed, assuming that it's not late, of course. Thanks, Megan. Let's go to Christian. I think your hand might be raised. Do you have a question? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Uh, yeah, just in regards to a, a TPA switch mid-quarter, um, let's say the, the prior TPA files and pays, uh, will the second TPA have to amend then? And then will that amendment have to be on paper? The second TPA can amend and it can be right in the system. Okay. Um, so we'll just, will we have to wait until after the filing deadline to amend or could we do it? Let's say they file the first couple of days of October and we catch it before October 31st, could we amend that or do we have to wait till after? Yeah, so when the employer associates the TPA to the account, they get to pick the date. So as long as they pick the start of the quarter, then it's it's all yours. You can do the amendment on it. Okay, okay, thank you. Thanks, Christian. Um, how about this? When there's a difference between... Uh, their calculation in the system, how will they know which employers have the difference? That's a great question, Sharon. I'm thinking that um, you should be able to compare your um, numbers to pulling a bulk rate um, and a bulk filing report. You should be able to compare those together. Um, otherwise, I don't know how we could, you would be able to find those. Is that something that they should put in a customer service request for, or? We could probably help them try and figure it out, share. So a contact us um, or call um, that line that Megan said, the TPA line. Okay, great. Thanks, Julie. Um, let's take, we're just a couple minutes left. Let's take this. I think we have, uh, Daniel, is your hand raised again? Uh, yeah, I just have one further question. Um, with switching to being able to pay EFT via um, ATH debit, if we have an incorrect rate for a client, uh, will we be able to switch the payment in, like on the ATH debit part, or does it have to match our file to the penny? It's a good question. I don't know if I'm following. Um, I would imagine when you guys run your calculations, you're going to run it off of the rate that you guys have. And, you know, I'm pretty sure all TFPA can probably agree on this, where every client or every employer is not the best at providing a rate notice to um, their TPA or payroll company. Um, if we have the incorrect tax rate for a client, when you guys run your calculations, do our ACH um, debit payment have to match the calculation from your file to the penny, or are we able to adjust um, employer account payments based off of what we are paying? Okay, I'm with you now. So um, good news, you'll be able to be get access to all of that rate information in the system. So wanted to start there. You don't have to rely on the employers to send it to you anymore. You'll be able to get it. Um, if you have a different amount, you can always type in a different amount into the system. So the system will calculate the amount due. But if you say, say it says $50 and you're like, no, we only owe 25, you could choose to pay 25. Just know that um, if that is not fixed to reconcile the account, that $25 will still be owed. Um, but you can change the amount of the payment. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks, Daniel. I think that uh, is about time for us. Um, we did answer just over 70 questions in the chat and have a few outstanding, which we will post on our website. 
Um, again, this is not your last opportunity to ask questions of our experts. We'll likely schedule another TPA focused webinar um, in addition to the ones we already have published on our website. Um, and we'll send out this recording and the deck to all participants for today. So thank you to Julie and Megan and our experts who answered questions. Thanks for joining us and um, we will see you next time. Thanks so much, take care.